we return again to end the debate as to who really won. And in this edition, we're going to be looking at one of the greatest fighters of all time, George St. Pierre, where he defeated Johnny Hendricks by a controversial, unanimous decision, which left many fans in confusion. This was one of the biggest controversial title fights in the history of MMA. Most people believe that Johnny Hendricks defeated George St. Pierre that night to become the newly crowned welterweight champion. Now, regarding this fight, it happened in November of 2013, which was under a different unified rule system. Them. This fight was going by the 2012 report of the ABC Unified Rules for MMA Judging. So before we get into the fight, we have to actually look at how the fight was scored back in the day because this is not modern standards. Now, of course, the fight is judged by a 10-point must system. And quote, judges shall evaluate mixed martial arts techniques such as effective striking, grappling, aggression, and octagon control. Scoring evaluations shall be made giving equal weight to effective striking and effective grappling. It will be determined on a sliding skill. This is important. If a round is affected more by striking, then striking will be weighed more heavily. If a round is affected more by grappling, then grappling will be weighed more heavily. That is actually different than what it is today. Cage and octagon control are secondary criteria to be used when effective striking and grappling are even. Effective aggression will be weighed more heavily than octagon control." Unquote. So that is very interesting. Back in those days, the judging criteria actually wasn't that different than it is today. It's judged on a supremacy basis. Effective striking and effective grappling are weighed the same. Now this depends on which one is impacting the round more. So pretty much if there's more grappling going on in the round, that is going to take priority on the judges scorecards and then we also have vice versa and if those are exactly even then you go to the next criteria which is aggression and octagon control so the secondary criteria is both octagon control and aggression but aggression is going to be weighed more heavily than octagon control so we are really only going to look at the effect of striking and grappling of each round we are most likely not going to be looking at aggression or octagon control very similar to how we look at fights today so if you didn't know the judging criteria back in the day this is how it went it was actually very similar it's just aggression and octagon control can be judged at the same time but if effective striking and grappling are not even, then you don't even look at aggression or octagon control because it goes by a sliding scale. Now, what is effective striking and what does effective grappling mean? According to the definition, effective striking is judged by determining the impact of legal strikes landed by the contestant and the number of such legal strikes. Heavy strikes that have a visible impact on the opponent will be given more weight than the number of strikes landed. That's the same thing as today. These assessments include causing an opponent to appear stunned from a legal blow, causing the opponent to a stagger, appearance of a cut or bruise from a legal strike, and causing the opponent to show pain. Cumulative impact on the fighter will also be weighed. If neither fighter shows an advantage in an impact of strikes, the number of strikes will determine the most effective striker. Interesting. So that's pretty much the exact same thing that we look at today. So then we look at effective grappling. Effective grappling is judged by considering the amount of successful executions of legal takedowns, reversals, and submission attempts. Examples of factors to consider are takedowns from a standing position to a mount position, passing the guard to a dominant position, and bottom position fighters using an active threatening guard to create submission attempts. Submission attempts, which come close to ending a fight, will be weighed more highly than attempts which are easily defended. Submission attempts which cause an opponent to weaken or tire from the effort required to defend the technique will also be weighed highly in scoring. High amplitude takedowns and throws which create impact will be scored more heavily than a takedown which does not have great impact." Unquote. So that is pretty much the exact same thing as today, except they didn't really go to ground and pound. They really talk much about ground and pound, which is interesting. So according to the criteria, I guess ground and pound might actually factor into effective striking rather than effective grappling. So let's look at what the judges thought of the fight so we can determine what rounds we have to look at. So it seems like the only round that the judges disagreed on was the first round. Sal Diamato and Tony Weeks both gave the first round to George St. Pierre, whereas Glenn Trowbridge gave it to Johnny Hendricks. Every other round was agreed on. Second round all went to Johnny Hendricks. Third round all went to George St. Pierre. Fourth round all went to Johnny Hendricks. And fifth round went all to George St. Pierre as well. So again, damage is going to trump all. Nothing much is really going to change here. So in order for us to judge this round the most accurately, we're going to categorize each strike in accordance to damage, light, medium, and heavy. Let's get right into it. So we start the round and George St. Pierre is able to land a very light jab from a distance as Johnny Hendricks is moving away. Then Johnny Hendricks wings in that huge signature left overhand and George St. Pierre ducks right under it, counters him with a double leg takedown. The best in the business showing his double leg. Now this didn't have a, a great impact so it's not really going to be scored as highly as a high amplitude takedown, but it does get the fight to the ground. GSP goes in for a guillotine which he only uses to get into a better position on top right into half guard but Hendricks is able to push him 
off and kick his leg up. GSP goes in for another guillotine, but then lets it go. Not much effect. So Johnny Hendricks lands six knees to the leg and one right hand to the body, whereas GSP lands two knees and four right hands to the body. On a failed takedown attempt, GSP lands one punch to the head as Hendricks lands two uppercuts. And one of them seems to do a little bit more damage. So we're going to count that one as a medium attack. GSP lands three cage strikes. And as he changes levels for a double leg, Johnny Hendricks lands five big elbows to the head that causes GSP to let go of the takedown. And one of them opens a cut. According to the judging criteria, opening up a cut should be rewarded heavily. So we're going to count that one as a heavy strike. As he reverses the position, Hendricks lands two knees to the leg and one right hand to the body. Johnny Hendricks is able to get a double leg takedown against the cage briefly. George St. Pierre gets on the offensive and throws a front kick to the body, but very lightly taps Johnny Hendricks as he moves away from it. And then Hendricks moves forward to counter a potential double leg takedown from GSP by throwing up an intercepting knee. Now, GSP did not go under for the takedown, but the knee still lands. But it lands as Hendrix is bringing the knee downward. But this stumbles GSP backwards, causing it to be a heavy attack. On the retreat, GSP is able to land a very light jab at the very end of his punch. And then GSP continues his output, landing another jab, an inside leg kick, and a side kick to the body. Nothing with much power, but just to keep Johnny Hendricks away from him. And as Hendricks is trying to make his aggression count, he lunges in there with a huge left uppercut, which gets pulled back by GSP, and GSP is able to land a very good check left hook. After taking the blow, though, Hendricks is able to land a left hook of his own with not much power. And then GSP lands going up with a question mark kick that does get partially blocked by Johnny Hendricks, decreasing the impact of the blow. So we're going to count this as a medium attack. Didn't really cause much of an effect. And then afterward, they get right into the clinch. And that's when Hendricks gets back to work with the knees to the leg and GSP with the right hands to the body. Johnny Hendricks lands four knees to the leg, one right hand to the body, as George Sampier lands one right hand to the body of his own, and two knees to the body. One of them getting a bigger reaction out of Johnny Hendricks, counting as a medium attack. But Hendricks ends the clinch exchange with a left elbow. GSP lands two leg kicks, one jab to the head, one jab to the body, and a front kick to the chest, as Johnny Hendricks lands two leg kicks of his own. But on George St. Pierre's final leg kick, Johnny Hendricks takes it and enters down the center with a huge left hand that lands big on GSP. As they're both in close range, GSP's trying to get away, and he lands a left hook to the back of the head. He lands a right hand to the body, and then Hendricks again tries to get on the aggression with that looping left uppercut, misses again as GSP pulls away from it and slips his head on the outside, and again counters Johnny Hendricks with a check left hook, ending the first round. So who won the first round here? Telling up all the strikes and the grappling exchanges, we have one takedown apiece, GSP going in for a couple guillotines that weren't really deep at all, but Johnny Hendricks was also able to reverse the position, so so there's a slight edge for grappling on GSP's part. But overall, nothing really crazy happened on the ground. When we go into the striking department, GSP outstruck Johnny Hendricks in total strikes by exactly one. He has 29 total strikes. Johnny Hendricks has 28, but Hendricks inflicted far more damage than GSP did, making that the most impactful and effective thing about this round. Johnny Hendricks strikes three heavy and seven medium strikes, whereas GSP had no heavy strikes, only four medium. That means that Johnny Hendricks has won this round by a 10-9. Because of that, we can go right into the scorecards. Did the judges get this correct? They did not. Johnny Hendricks should have won this fight on a decision, as most of us suspected. Even though the first round isn't necessarily so far apart, it's nothing near a 10-8 round, it was pretty clear that Johnny Hendricks won the round through damage. And because of that, you can argue that the fight was a robbery, depending on how you define a robbery. If you believe that close fights can also be deemed a robbery, then this would fit that mold. What would have happened if things went correctly, if Johnny Hendricks won the belt? To be honest, things might not have changed that much. GSP went on a hiatus after this fight, so there's two things that could have happened here. They could have had an immediate rematch, GSP losing for the first time in so many years after so many title defenses. Would he be motivated enough to want to get that win back? That is one option. We probably would have saw a rematch between the two, or GSP would have took the hiatus regardless, and Johnny Hendricks would have continued his career and fought the next contender, and who was that? Robbie Lawler. Johnny Hendricks and Robbie Lawler already fought on our timeline and we saw how all of that went. Honestly, nothing much would have changed, but it all depends on if GSP would have wanted the rematch. And that is who really should have won this fight. Leave in the comments below which one you guys want to see next and I'll see you guys in the next video.